Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you, Elisa, for this uh, lovely introduction, and thank you, uh, Zytost Europa Gesellschaft, for this opportunity. It is a great pleasure to be here with you and to present you the topic that is fascinating me for quite some time now. Today, I will talk about uh, music production during the war in Bosnia and Herzegovina in the period from 1992 to 1995. Uh, why I find this topic so fascinating? Because it shows that music and music making are not just entertainment, as we usually expect from popular music, but it is much more. And I believe that during the pandemic, we all saw and experienced the role of and functions of culture and music in our everyday lives. Just a reminder, singing from balconies, thanking medical workers, or asking people to stay at home through songs. In this lecture, I will take you back to the 1990s and show you what role that music had during the war in Bosnia-Herzegovina, focusing on, I call them, the official and the alternative music scene uh, that was existing when people were dying on a daily basis because of grenades, snipers, hunger, coldness, or sickness. I want to show you that despite and also because of this unpleasant and life dangerous situation people were thrown in at, the production of popular music expands to such high level that even a stanza in one popular song says, I quote, and even when silent, Sarajevo sings. Uh, what can you expect from today's lecture? At first, I will give you a brief historical context and some basic information about the war. I will tell you more about cultural life uh, during the war and put the focus on music examples to show you how rich and genre diverse the music production was. Each song will be sort of a cue for additional uh, explanation of either the lyrics, context, singers, theoretical background. After the presentation, we will give you enough time for the debate and I hope that the songs will trigger some uh, questions, ideas, insights. Before we dive in, I just realized I made one technical uh, mistake and I will have to uh, stop sharing and share the, the presentation again because I have to share sound stereo, yes. Great, sorry for that. And yes, let's... Let continue. Uh, the dissolution of Yugoslavia started in 1990 and developed into an armed conflict that escalated first in Slovenia and Croatia in 1991 and then in April 1992 also in Bosnia and Herzegovina. In Slovenia and Croatia, uh, Republic's territorial defense uh, unit fought against the Yugoslav People's Army and when people in Bosnia were observing these atrocities happening there, they really believed that something like that could not happen to them. On April 6, 1992, when Bosnia and Herzegovina was already an independent state, demonstration for peace took place in Sarajevo. Bosnian Serb army sniper killed two protesters, Svada Dilberovic and Olga Tucic, and this date is marked as the official beginning of the war. When Bosniak, Serbian and Croatian president signed the Dayton Peace Accord on December 14, 1995, this date marks the end of the war. In three and a half years, inhabitants of Bosnia-Herzegovina, regardless of their national and religious affiliation, were disposed to constant fear of death, ethnic cleansing and genocide, concentration camps, ex expulsion, malnutrition, diseases, lack of food, heating material, medical supplies, electricity, and running water. As estimated, around 100,000 people were killed and over 2.2 million displaced. My first assumption when reading about the war in Bosnia and Herzegovina was that the normal life, as we know it and as Ivan Amacek defines it, you can see the quote on the slide, was destroyed. People who stayed in Bosnia and Herzegovina tried to survive the bombs, grenades, fightings, and shellings. Diving deeper into the literature and conducted field work in Bosnia and Herzegovinian cities, Sarajevo, Zenica, and Tuzla, I learned that after the first shock, 
people adapted to the new circumstances and started to live the new version of normal life. That meant standing in line for bread, water, humanitarian aid, walking long distances, gathering heating material, freezing in cold apartments, running to dangerous intersection to escape the sniper, uh, filling out com complex uh, applications and spending time in shelters. On the contrary, cultural life reached its peak during the war. Many theater plays were performed and according to Bosnian actress and writer Ivedra Nasekta, Sarajevo became the city of theater plays. The most known play was Waiting for Godot, directed by Susan Zontak. National Theater in Zenica performed a play Delitpa by Skander Kulenovic. Musical Hair was also very popular. In 1993, a beauty pageant, Miss Opetich Sarajevo, was organized. Many newspapers and journals were newly published. For example, newspaper Oslobodenje came out every day during the war, and I had the chance to look through every number in the National Archive of Bosnia-Herzegovina in Sarajevo. Inhabitants of Bosnia and Herzegovina understood all those events as spiritual resistance to the war itself. In case of Sarajevo, Ivan Amacek said, I quote, the need to resist the war also resulted in an amazing explosion of cultural life. Art was popular with Sarajevans not only because it was imitating normality, but also because it was a means by which everyday common problems and traumas could be expressed and shared. Similarly, the public life in the town, streets, cafes, restaurants, and fashionably dressed youth flourished, flourished as much as it could. These were the symbols of resistance proudly pointed out to every visitor in town. Music production all over Bosnia was also enormous. Bosnian musicologist Ivan Chavlovich wrote, I quote, during the war, Largest cities had what is called a musical life and which lived through numerous manifestations that were organized in the afternoon hours and in protected venues." End quote. In Sarajevo, musicians performed on festivals like Sarajevo Winter Festival, Bashtarshia Nights, Sarajevo International Music Festival, and as Vedra Nasekson said, more than 2,000 concerts of classical, popular music, and different alternative music genres were held. Some singers and or bands recorded their songs on audio cassettes in official recording studios that were usually part of radio and television stations. Many private recording studios specialized on production of patriotic songs. And as my interviewer explained, these songs were usually dedicated to specific army units and were mostly of poorer quality. You will hear that later. Nothing unusual was that the Bosnian and Herzegovinian army owned several recording studios. For easier understanding, I divided the music scene to the official and the alternative, where different musicians and bands were performing songs in different music genres and sang about different topics. The most popular genres on the official music scene were pop rock, newly composed folk music, Vdalinka, it's a traditional song, and the Muslim religious hymn Ilahia. Main themes of the songs were homeland, army, cities, monuments, peace, patriotism, and love. The majority of songs were sung in Bosnian language, except one, Help Bosnia Now, that was sung in English. The most popular names were singers like Dina Merlin, Merlin, Mladen Vojcic, Tifa, Faruk Jajic, Hasiba Agi, Davorin Popovic, Safet Isovic, and many others. There were also several bands, Macbeth, Alinsky Tamburashi, Okus Meda. One interesting phenomena occurred during the war, the art units of the Bosnian and Herzegovinian army. The idea behind it uh, was that each of seven corps would have a group of professional and amateur singers and musicians responsible to compose patriotic songs and perform them, perform them at different occasions. That meant visiting soldiers on the front line or in barracks or in hospitals uh, or at different ceremonies. All art units were very active and productive and they usually sang about homeland Bosnia-Herzegovina or about their own cities and brigades. 
Many of them recorded their songs on audio cassettes, which are a rarity today and are a very important source of information. Next to art units, uh, the army of Bosnia and Herzegovina also had its military orchestra. On the other side, uh, we can uh, we have this alternative uh, music scene uh, where the bands were playing uh, punk, metal, uh, heavy metal, hip hop, rock and roll, grunge. Main themes of the songs were everyday life's problems, drug use or abuse, mental health and mental illnesses, love problems, cold apartments, terrible living conditions, political situation. They performed those songs in both Bosnian and English language. The most popular names of the groups were Mesetari, Sikter, STH, Protest, Rupa Zidu, Keskin, Ifebo, Bombay Stampa, Muha Band. Now I would like to uh, present you uh, more into detail both of those um, music scenes and also play some music, music examples. Uh, before I do that, I would then like to warn you that those are um, uh, those are the examples from the 90s and as I already mentioned before, the quality wasn't so good, so please adjust your, your microphones and your uh, speakers. Go to the official music scene. Slovenian anthropologist Rajko Murshid wrote, I quote, in the wartime, countries often, if not always, intervene into public transmission of popular music, end of quote. And, Bosnia, and the government of Bosnia and Herzegovina was no exception. They supported and financed not just the work, music production, and recording of army art units, but also individual singers and bands that glorified Bosnia and Herzegovina, the army, and expressed patriotism in their songs. What I noticed was the disappearance of Serbian music from the public media. This censorship was the first step in the recreation of the new Bosniak or Bosniak national identity that was based on the Islamization of public life and the erasure of all non-Bosniak. In practice, that meant that all government controlled media transmitted patriotic songs in pop rock and newly composed folk music genres Old and new Sevdalinka, Ilahia, and religious song Kasida. Here, I would like to play you now some examples of the official music scene. The first example will be Mladen Vojicic Tifa, Ponesi Zastavu Dragan Vikicu, or Carry the Flag to Dragan Vikic. Ovdje se tuga, širi ko kuga, samo sloboda donosi mijek. Dole ni zdrinu, dok ljudi ginu, dolazi sreća, ostaće za uvijek. That the first impression. Uh, the, I would say that Mladen Vojčić Tifa was a lead singer of the band Pielo Dugme before the band fell apart. And officially he was never uh, an art unit member, but stayed in Sarajevo throughout the war and performed patriotic songs and he was very popular among uh, citizens of Sarajevo. In, his, in this song that you just heard, He's glorifying a commander of a spe special police forces, Dragan Vikic. And Dragan Vikic was uh, next to General Jovan Divjak, another, I'll put it in quotation marks, a good sir who did not leave Sarajevo, <clears throat> sorry, but stayed and defended. Uh, many interviewees pointed out that the question of national identity became very important during the war, and uh, those who did not declare themselves as Bosniak often felt the mistrust and they had to prove themselves to be um, worthy Croat, Serb, Roma <clears throat> or any other nationality. And apologist Ivan Amacek noticed that, I quote, mistrust and ostracism were general phenomena used not only against Serbs or those of different nationalities, but also against those who had left or fallen out of touch. To continue her thoughts, our next musical example refers to uh, 
those who left. We will listen to the song Mogla si barbakat poslati by the uh, group Mesechari. In translation, you could at least have them the package. <laughs> As you can hear, uh, this kind of patriotic songs was a little bit different than the one we heard before. And um, the song speaks about real events in life under siege, mentioning the tunnel under the airport runway or forced trench digging, but all in this uh, happy way, I can say. It has this vivid melody, a reggae beat, uh, and it's sending a positive vibe, but is also looking critically at those who left. Uh, and singer says, you could at least have done the package. Because Sarajevo and also other cities that were besieged, uh, regular people did not have the access to basic life necessities and were depending on humanitarian aid and uh, the black market that was also very much present and from packages uh, from abroad. Next example, uh, it's performed by the Third Core Art Unit and they made like a unique song uh, which wasn't typical for the th uh, Art Unit. Uh, it's made in rock genre and it's sort of a band aid. So let's listen to the song Nek u Bosni Ljubav Živi. Let the love live in Bosnia. <laughs> is not interesting only because of the genre in which it is performed, but also because of its lyrics. Uh, in the beginning, they are mentioning the Kulin Ban and the medieval Bosnian state, and the lyrics emphasizes the foreverness of the Bosnian state and its historical existence, which I understand and see as a historical myth of the thousand-year-old nations known all over the Balkan Peninsula. Furthermore, the lyrics emphasize that the land will survive all the suffering because of the patriotic love its citizens have for their country. The last music example from the official uh, music scene comes from the northwestern Bosnian and Herzegovinian city, Pazin, where a group of men are playing tamburica, this is a plucked flute, and sing about the liberation of Bosnia and Herzegovina. They are dressed in military clothes, but uh, it is not known whether they are soldiers uh, or they just wore the uniforms for the for the video. And I'm, I'm not sure if you can see it. Uh, here it says that this is the Bihać studio of the uh, national television of Bosnia Herzegovina, so the place where the song was was recorded. Let's listen to it. <laughs> Thank you. 
So those who understand Bosnian, you could say, yeah, it's a classical patriotic song. They're glorifying their homeland. Uh, but what strikes me the most are the instruments. Because uh, Mirjana Laušević emphasized that all three warring parties used traditional music genres and instruments to spur nationalistic feelings and to create a new national sound. So in this case, Tamburica, this instrument, I quote again, belongs to Croatia and not uh, Bosnia. For Bosnia, uh, they said that they have uh, the uh, for the the is, uh, sorry the long string instrument from the family of tambura and it's called tas while the Serbs have the one one string instrument called gusla of course people all over the Balkan Peninsula play all of those instruments there isn't that's not debatable and uh, Janic reported that many Serbian soldiers played gusla on the front line uh, and intimidate the enemy with its specific sound. Additionally, ethnomusicologist Naila Teribacic explained that Kusle symbolized the Serbian masculinity, while the Tamburica symbolized the Croatian femininity. Now we will, hopefully this will work. Mm -hmm. We will go to the alternative music scene that existed parallel with official music scene and it became extremely popular in the country where concerts were taking place in clubs and private places. There were some private radio stations playing Western rock and Bosnian alternative music, like for example Radio Zid in Sarajevo, Radio Garden in Mostar or Radio Kameleon in Tuzla. Those radio stations put a lot of attention not only into promotion of young uh, alternative bands, but also into education of listeners against nationalism and intolerance. So if the official music scene consisted of already established popular singers, many new bands emerged on the alternative scene. The frontman of the band Sichter, Enes Zlatar, explained, alternative music scene during the war was a source of fantastic ideas and energy that kept us, young people, in more or less normal state of mind. Concerts in Obala and Sloga were some sort of an escape from the war and horror into a normal world of club culture and going out in the evening. In January 1995, Radio Zid organized a never to be forgotten event, Rock Under Siege, where local bands presented their songs on the stage of Sloga discotheque. Alternative music scene was well developed also in other cities like Mostar, Zenica, Tuzla, Bihar, where local bands and singers were singing about already mentioned topics. In Mostar, Nenad Golubic Golub led the most significant hardcore band from that time, named Genevsky Dekret, while in Tuzla, a band Rupa Uzidu with the lead singer Damir Avdic recorded two albums during the war. Their ly lyrics are all very critical about the situation and are focusing on everything else but national identity. So let's listen to some examples. For the first example, I chose, oh, I have a spelling uh, mistake, I'm sorry for that. Uh, the first example will be the Sara Ivan Ben Sikter, and I want to show you some parts uh, of their concerts held in front of the Catholic Church in Sarajevo, because I think it really, it's a great example of how the alternative scene functioned in that time. So I'll play you some. Maxu za ovo već je spremala, a zove se Sikter Ben. Šta je, šta je sad? Sarajevan band 
was formed in 1990 as a punk rock project. Nikolai Jeffs noticed it was one of the few bands that survived the trans transition to war intact and was able to perform throughout the war. The concert took place in colder months, as um, the speaker announced it, uh, but the young enthusiastic musicians came to the stage topless, greeting all the hippies in the audience. They performed several songs, and we can see that the music equipment was very basic. Uh, the band also performed many songs in English, and what is more important, they were the first band from Bosnia and Herzegovina whose song, titled Pain in Brain, uh, MTV broadcasted for several months. Next example, I hope it will work because it's from the YouTube. Uh, it's originally from the northeastern city of Tuzla. Uh, at the first multi-party elections in 1990, uh, Tuzla was the only city in Bosnia and Herzegovina where a non-nationalistic party, uh, Alliance of Reformed Forces, won um, control over the municipality and was therefore seen as a, su a success story because it rejected nationalism. Let's listen to the song Neću da umre mlad, I do not want to die young, from the hardcore punk blues band Rupa Uzizu. <laughs> Critically at the war, where the singer Damir Avdic sings that he does not do, that he does not want to die young and refuses to be a tribute to history. Additionally, he does not want to be many things, but most of all, he does not want to be a dusty picture on on a tombstone. So the next music example is from Bihar, a town in northwest Bosnia and Herzegovina, where a duo. Uh, Kerskin Ifebo made a patriotic song about their uh, hometown Bihar. Uh, you will ask me why are there al alternative on the alternative music scene, but you will know that soon. <laughs> situation, uh, but with a more positive vibe than Rupa Uzidu. This song has a clear patriotic message uh, where the city of Bihaj stands in the forefront. Simple lyrics is saying that people will defend their hometown, but what differs this song from the patriotic songs of the official music scene is that in the intro that we heard, all three religious greetings are performed in a rap style. Yes, official patriotic songs did also sang about United Bosnia and Herzegovina, but never really mentioned religious diversity as in this song. Our next uh, and also last music example has an interesting title. These are our guns, why I love Bosnia and why I don't like Serbia by Muha Band. The lead singer, uh, Muha Ramunikovic, from him also the name Muha Band, formed the first version of the band already before the war, but during the war, changed um, the name to Muha Band uh, because they performed, so to say, uh, happy songs, as he said himself in one of his interviews, the group became uh, very popular in Bosnia and Herzegovina. 
Let's listen to the song and then I will tell you more about it. This music example is a compilation of Western popular music adapted to the situation in Sarajevo in 1994, made from several songs. Luca by Susan Vega, Doesn't Matter If You're Black or White by Michael Jackson, Alabama Song by The Doors, I Want to Break Free, and also a Sovdalinka, Utputuya Latif Aga. <clears throat> the song and the video are critical towards the United Nations, the Umprofor, and the whole world because they were looking away and not intervening sooner. When searching for the literature about the alternative music scene and its bands in Bosnia and Herzegovina, I noticed that the literature very rarely mentioned them. The only way or the best way to get information is to interview the members, but in reality that might be a bit harder to do. As Damir Audit explained, uh, the alternative scene was well developed, also in comparison to some European countries, but during the war they were facing many difficulties, like <clears throat> finding instruments and equipment, get electricity, places to practice and perform, even audience. Rupa Uzidu had a couple of concerts in Sarajevo, but traveling from your hometown was dangerous and never easy. Audit also pointed out that Sarajevan bands had the advantage of being in the capital city, where many NGOs, UMPRO for United Nations personnel, could bring them uh, strings, pigs, or drumsticks. Another in important finding is the fact that we can speak about alternative music scene as popular alternative. What does that mean? It means popular because of its mass consumption and production, and alternative because of its political stance. According to ethnomusicologist Svani Borpetan, Official patriotic songs had three basic functions, to encourage the soldiers on the front line and the civilians in the shelters, to provoke and humiliate the enemy, and to call for the involvement of international community. While conducting fieldwork in Bosnia and Herzegovina, my interviewees also emphasized two additional functions of both music scenes production, naming the resistance and cure. When the war was over, the majority of in-war produced songs disappeared from the radio and TV stations. I quote, there was no need for them anymore. And to be honest, I had to catch up the lost time and listen to all the songs produced around the world in that time, said one interviewee. Another interviewee added, I quote, patriotic songs were popular, there is no doubt about that. But in some way we were forced to listen to them. They were constantly on the radio or TV. Later, in 1994, young people were listening to the Croatian dance group E.T. and their hit Tekia Dvane Stati. I loved Iron Maiden and the Scorpion. That was our popular music. Now you decide what is popular. Uh, what the young people listen to or what it's played on the radio. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>